Hi, I'm BK. So um, there are already a lot of videos that show you how to configure uh, loopback into uh, your Zoom or even for Ecamm Live. So why another video? Because even though I followed most of them to the letter, I couldn't get them to work for my use case, right? And so what is my use case? My use case is actually I have a Roadcaster Pro and I'm actually then um, processing the audio uh, using Audio Hijack, another excellent software from Rook Amoeba. And then I send that to uh, either Zoom or Ecamm Live or sometimes a combination of both. So I'm just going to quickly walk you through how I set it up to make it to help it uh, to make it work for my use case and hopefully that helps you. So let's get started. So first thing to do is uh, we'll start up uh, loopback. And uh, as you can see, I've already created some audio channels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all of them first. And normally if you start up fresh, you would not see any of this at all, right? So the first thing you need to do is to create a virtual device or it's kind of like a virtual mic in your system. And um, I will gonna, I'm going to start one. I'm going to create a virtual device. By default, it's usually called loopback audio, but um, I would suggest you name it something that uh, makes sense to you. And what I normally like to name it is uh, where it's supposed to go or what is the function of that particular microphone, right? So for example, for me, and I like to name it with a numerical number in front so that it floats up to the top uh, in the order of um, precedence. So um, I'm going to call this virtual mic that I'm going to create called process, if I can spell, <laughs> process audio. Okay, so this is actually a pass-through device and that's the only pass-through device I'm going to set up for now. Now this is important because um, this will be what I'm going to use for the next step. So I created one pass-through device and it's the only one that is turned on. Oops, let me turn off the rest as well. Yep, so this is the only one that is turned on right now. So in order for the system to recognize it, sometimes you might need to turn it off and turn it on again. Okay, so that's for step one for loopback. Now I'm going to start the second uh, option, a second software that I like, I need to use, which is Audio Hijack. Now Audio Hijack is a wonderful uh, audio routing software as well from Rogue Amoeba. And the best part is it allows me to be able to use uh, VST plugins to process my audio before it even goes into Zoom or Ecamm Live. So I'm going to start a new session. And I'm just going to click a blank session. Uh, let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it better. So normally when you start off fresh, there is absolutely nothing on it. And what you need to do is to drag on the pieces of the signal chain that you need, right? So I'm going to first add a source, right? So an input source. So you just drag from the onto the time onto your grid, for example. Now, because as I mentioned, I am using Roadcaster Pro. And this is the multi-channel Roadcaster Pro is already shown here because um, this is the sound, uh, the audio the interface that I'm using. Now you could go to advanced and by default it goes to channel 1 and channel 2. Now I typically prefer to select the microphone I'm using which is microphone uh, which is on channel 3. And this is just a dual mono. So this is on channel 3 which is the microphone that I'm, I'm currently going to use for this particular setup. Okay, and then because I want to do a little bit of processing, I'm going to select the VSTs. Hang on a minute. Yep. So there are some default ones that are already built into um, this um, into Audio Hijack, but because I also own some of my own, so I'm going to use some of them that I own. So I'm going to add the first one, which is a noise suppression. So you notice that there's a quite a few here, uh, but I'm going to add the first one, which is actually a noise suppression plugin. And I need to add a stereo version of it. So just drag it onto the grid here. And the signal chain will go from your input source into noise suppression. 
and I'm going to just yep this is at the normal level that I normally set it at then the next step for the signal chain is I normally would add a uh, Greg Wells voice centric so this is a Greg Wells voice centric uh, plug-in stereo as well and this is the next step and again let's double check and this is the normal setting I like to have it on and after that I usually would have a a bit of a equalizer so this is the F6 dynamic equalizer six channels and let me double check and this is uh, what I usually like to set it on as well and finally I also add in a vocal rider which is here so from the Rodecaster Pro it then goes into noise suppression noise uh, Greg Wells voice centric and F6 uh, six band EQ and then lastly vocal rider which kind of helps me write the levels to make it a little bit more e equal right or even and the very last step for audio hijack is you need to set it to go to an output source which is your basically it becomes the mic right so I'm going to drag an output device and remember in step one I created the um, process mic under uh, loopback and I don't yep here nope that's process audio let me check what did I name it as oh yeah I name it as process audio let me change that I prefer to call it process mic yep and I need to turn it off and on again and you should show here as process mic so this actually shows you the full signal chain it goes from the input to the various audio plugins that I want to have and eventually it goes to the output device uh, which is as set as or, uh, which is set as uh, number one process mic which is the mic I'm going to use for the other platforms right now I'm not done with audio hijack the next thing I like to do is that I also like to uh, monitor the sound banks on or the sound effects on the uh, Rodecaster Pro right so this is just this input device is just the um, it's just the microphone I need to add another input device and I can just drag it here and this time round I need to set it to channels 13 and 14 which is the sound effects bank on the Rodecaster Pro so in this setup it actually goes to um, the whole signal chain goes to the output so that on the microphone I actually can hear both my mic as well as the sound effects now uh, one last thing to do I also need to monitor and the way I my use case is I kind of prefer not to hear my own voice uh, I just check everything before the show starts uh, or for before the meeting starts but I do need to listen to the sound effects as well as some other audio sources so I need to do that right so again I'll create an input device and this time round I'm going to select again channels 13 and 14 which is for the sound effects right so in this case I prefer to monitor using my in-ear monitor over here so this is the sound effects which I, I need to hear right so I'm going to add in the output device over here and I'm going to select the yep this is the correct one so what happens is when I play a sound effect on the Rodecaster Pro it, it will also feed into my in-ear monitors right uh, but it doesn't get recorded into the microphone so it's not, re it's not repeated twice right because I'm only capturing the audio from the output device as shown over here so I'm um, basically done for audio hijack um, you could also add in other things here but this is what I do uh, for the number one uh, process microphone setting that I like right so moving on so let me just minimize this so moving on I need to go back to audio uh, loopback sorry <clears throat> moving on I need to go back to loopback 
So now I need to set up the actual microphones as well as the input sources for uh, Ecamm Live or for Zoom or for any of the other applications that I intend to use uh, for uh, audio, right? So I'm going to create another virtual device. And this time around, let me call it number two. And my naming convention is, is like this. So I call it Ecamm Mic In so that when I, I know what to select when I uh, am inside Ecamm Live. Now, of course, it's entirely up to you how you want to name it, but this is for my easy reference. And I'm just going to delete this pass through. Okay. So the first thing inside Ecamm Mic, uh, or the first thing, the first uh, logical flow that you may want to think about is inside Ecamm your audio for Ecamm, what do you want to be fed into Ecamm, right? So I want it obviously to have my microphone, which is actually the process mic that I created because it takes the, the process sound effects and audio and then all the signal chain and goes into that process mic. So I'm going to add that as a microphone. So as you can see, it then adds the, it, it, the two channels are mapped pr uh, precisely to this. So that's the first part, right? So that is the microphone that will go into Ecamm um, Live, right? Which is the number one process mic which was created, getting the audio signal chain from loopback. Now, say for example, I also want to uh, have my Zoom audio that can go into um, uh, Ecamm Live. So what I do is I need to then also add in Zoom and because it's not open at the moment, it doesn't show up, but you can always just search for it. And this is Zoom, and I'm just going to open it. So notice the audio from Zoom will go into channels 1 and 2, which will then be fed into Ecamm Live. So inside Ecamm Live, if I'm on a Zoom session, they would be able to hear exactly what the people are doing or speaking about inside Zoom. So the other thing you need to do is quickly click on options and remove this mute when capturing. So uncheck this. And normally I like to move it down to roughly about 80% so that I have some level of gain staging if I need to. Okay. Now, um, so I am adding the audio from Zoom into Ecamm Live. Now let's say I also want to add in um, perhaps a Brave browser. Uh, which is already open. So let me just do that. So anything that I play inside Brave, for example, if I go to YouTube on the Brave browser, the audio will also be routed into Ecamm Live, right? And again, I like to bring it down to about 80%. Okay. And sometimes I may want to play something from Apple Music. Um, I need to unmute this as well. Right. So I may want to add in Apple Music. Now, just be very careful when you add in Apple Music, uh, it is copyrighted. So if you are doing a live stream, it might be flagged. But um, let's just give it as an example. So I'm just going to add on Apple Music. And once again, open options. Uncheck the one that says mute when capturing. And bring it down to say about 80%. Right. So these are all the audio sources that I want inside Ecamm Live, right? So I want my process microphone, I want Brave, I want Apple Music, and I also want Zoom, right? So I am set. I'm done for Ecamm Live, right? So this is the microphone. This is the virtual microphone I will use inside Ecamm Live. Now, so I'm going to create another virtual device or another virtual microphone. And I'm, I'm going to name it this time around, uh, number three, and this is uh, Zoom Mic In, right? So that's easy for me. Again, it's up to you what kind of naming convention you want to have. So I'm going to remove this pass through and the same uh, logical uh, flow. So what is the microphone I want to use for this application? So I'm going to add in the process mic, which is taking the process audio from audio hijack, right? And I want this time I want to 
my Zoom participants to be able to hear what's going on inside eCam. So I'm going to add in eCam. And because it's not open, I have to search for it. And right now I'm actually running a beta version. So this is the one that is that I should add on. And same thing again. And I'm going to move this down to about 80%. And same thing inside Zoom, if I do want to add the other uh, audio sources, for example, like Brave, I could do the same. Down to 80. And let's say I want to do Apple Music as well. And I'm more or less set for loopback inside here. So just to re quickly recap, I've created um, two microphones to be used, one for Ecamm, so Ecamm mic in, and then one for Zoom, Zoom mic in. Now, so what I then need to do is when I go to Ecamm Live, let me just start up Ecamm Live. And <clears throat> under the mic setting, which is here, I just need to choose Ecamm Mic In. So then it will actually be the correct audio input for uh, what I need to do, right? So this will be Ecamm Mic in okay and the same for zoom let me just start up zoom here and go to settings audio you select the now right now it's on system which is the roadcaster but it's not the one i want to use i need to select the microphone i created just now which is the zoom mic in Right now, you don't see anything right now because I have not turned it on. But once I turn it on, it actually will perform beautifully. So with this setup, I am able to process my microphone audio through Audio Hijack with the relevant uh, mic. Uh, I mean the VSTs that I have added into the signal chain. I can change my voice or change the sound effects and even play around with some of those funny effects you want to sometimes and it will work beautifully and at the same time uh, the my attendees or people on zoom can hear exactly what i want them to hear and if i'm running an interview session with uh, via ecamm live and i combine it with zoom uh, people from zoom can hear ecamm live people from ecamm live can hear zoom so this is my use case and it has been working very very very, very well for me um, <laughs> took a bit of time to experiment but it finally works uh, correctly for me so once again there are other videos out there there's other methodology but I find that this methodology works for me and it's working well for my setup so thank you for watching